I've been using Notion's brand new app, Notion Calendar, as my personal calendar daily driver for the past few weeks. And in that time, I have found some pretty cool tricks and features that I didn't talk about in my initial video on Notion Calendar and that you might not know about. So in this video, we're going to cover 10 brand new features and tricks inside a Notion calendar that you probably haven't heard of before. And if you stick around all the way to the end of this video, you, my friend, are gonna become a certified calendar master and I don't know, gain control over all space and time and stuff like that. Anyway, let's jump into the first tip, which is in my opinion, the coolest one. That's why I'm putting it right at the beginning here. Here on my Notion calendar, you can see I have an event on Tuesday, the 23rd called Productivity Lessons from Pokemon, which might be a video that I'd publish on my main channel. But weirdly, if I go two weeks into the future, in a different color, I have the same Productivity Lessons from Pokemon event. So what is going on here? Well, if we go over to Notion, we can see that I have a videos database here that has two different date properties. One for the script lock date, basically the date at which the script should be finished, and one that is the publish date. So the cool thing you can do with Notion Calendar that I discovered just this morning is you can put both of these dates on your calendar, even though they correspond to the same exact page in Notion. The way you do it is by making a calendar date for each of those different date properties. So let me quickly show you how that works. Basically, if I open up, say, this Productivity Lessons from Pokemon video right here, you can see I have two different date properties, each of their own different date values. So over in this view, which I've called Script Lock, I basically have a calendar view. And if I open up this little three-dot menu here and go into Layout, you can see that I am showing the calendar by the Script Lock date property. So over here, we have that Productivity Lessons from Pokemon uh, event at January 23rd, 2024. But then over here in this publish view, that is also a calendar view, we are instead calendaring by the publish date property. So basically we have two separate calendars in this database that are showing the same pages on different dates. Well, the cool thing is in Notion Calendar, you can actually bring both of those views into Notion Calendar. And I'll go ahead and remove them really quickly just so you can see exactly how it works. So I'm gonna remove videos twice here from my little College Info Geek area. I'm gonna hit refresh just to make sure the calendar is nice and ready for this operation. Uh, we'll hit T to go to today. And then if I go down to my College Info Geek Notion workspace and I add a Notion database, and now we can see both of those calendar views are available to be chosen. So if I choose that script lock view, it comes in. Uh, unfortunately, as videos, it doesn't show the name of the view quite yet, but I can do the exact same thing, hit O, uh, choose that College Info Geek space, choose that videos database, and then also choose that publish view. And now I have them both. So we can see this videos view shows me the script lock date. And then if I go over two weeks from now, we can see the exact same page in a different color. And uh, that's going to represent the publish date. Now here is where I have a feature request for the Notion team. Obviously, this has a little bit of roughness to it right now because I can't actually see, number one, any of the database properties, such as the fact that this is a script lock or publish date. Uh, and I also can't even see which calendar view this is coming in from. Now, if I click these individual uh, views over here on the side, I can see publish right there and I can see script lock right there. So it kind of works, but I would love to see this fleshed out in the future so we could, again, represent multiple dates for a single Notion page directly on the calendar and see the context of those dates on Notion Calendar as well. Tip number two is all about connecting complex Notion templates like my Ultimate Brain template or anybody else's complex template you might be using up to Notion Calendar. I got a lot of questions about this in my original video on Notion Calendar as well as over in our customer community for our templates. So I wanna show you how to do it and this is gonna equip you to be able to work with basically any complex template and this app. So here I have a demo version of the task manager in my template Ultimate Brain, which basically has tasks and projects and notes, a whole productivity system all in one. And if we scroll down on the task manager, we can see that there are calendar views for these task views here. But when I go over to Notion Calendar and I find my little template demos workspace that I've connected and I try to add a Notion database, nothing shows up. The reason for that is basically stated right here. Databases with a calendar or timeline view in Notion appear here. And the problem with these calendar views is that they're actually linked database views. Basically, a linked database is a wholly separate block in Notion that kind of gives you a window to a source database that lives somewhere else. So right now with a Notion calendar, we actually have to add the calendar view to the source database itself. Adding one as a linked view isn't going to cut it. So let me show you a really quick trick for doing that and getting to that source database very easily. First, choose any page in the database you're trying to work with. So right here, I've got book reservation at Best Friend, which is my favorite restaurant in Las Vegas. Try it if you ever get the 
a chance. I'm gonna open this up as a full page and that is gonna give me access to the breadcrumbs up here. And directly to the left of the page that I'm on right now is the database that contains that page. So now I have made it to the source database, this all tasks database. And if I unlock it, because we lock the databases in our templates to prevent uh, accidental changes, now I'll be able to add a new view directly to the database. So if I hit plus right here and then I choose calendar, I can hit done. And actually before I hit done, I want to change this show calendar by uh, property from wait date to do, which is what I want a calendar by. If I hit done there, now I've got this calendar view directly in the source database. And if I go back to Notion Calendar, give it a good old refresh with command R. Now when I hit O and I go into template demos, I can see all tasks UBCC because we now have that calendar uh, view. So if I click to add that, now I'll be adding all those tasks directly to my Notion calendar. And if we look back at Notion, we should have a few tasks throughout the week, book reservations, send newsletter, get new dumbbells, etc. So if we go back over to Notion calendar, let's see if we actually see those. Book reservation at best friend is on there with a time uh, and the rest of them are there as all day events. And a cool thing you can actually do with Notion calendar is drag your all day events, even if they are Notion pages down into the calendar and schedule them just like that. So now I have a two hour event called get new dumbbells. And if I go back over to Notion, I can see that the Notion page has gotten that time uh, and date range as well. Tip number three is all about time travel, specifically time zone travel. So in my previous video on Notion Calendar, I did point out that you can add multiple time zones here to the left side of the week view. It doesn't quite work in the month view, it's not gonna show you them there, but in week view, you can see up to four different time zones. And here I've got one for Denver, one for the Philippines, one for Poland, and one for the UK. But there's one small problem with this feature, and that's that while you can see what time it is in each of these different time zones, it's not readily apparent how this time Time here on say an event called get new dumbbells that is scheduled for 2 p.m. translates to a different time zone. But that can be fixed with their time zone travel feature. So I'm actually gonna hit J and go over to another week. And here I've got this example meeting with Dave event that is happening at 3 p.m. my time. But Dave is actually in New York. So if I wanna travel to New York time zone, I can hit Z and then I can find Eastern Standard Time in New York, enable that. And now I have temporarily shifted my entire calendar over to Eastern Standard Time, uh, which you can see by the right highlighting here. And we can see that meeting with Dave is now displayed at 5 p.m. New York time. So this is a great way to basically shift your entire calendar into a different time zone so you can see what it would look like from the perspective of somebody in that time zone. And then if I want to time travel back to my home time zone, I can just hit escape and boom, I'm right back in mountain time. Tip number four is all about left aligning the today column so you can see more of what's coming up on your calendar. So here on my calendar, you can see we're about in the middle of the week, it's Tuesday, and uh, this Tuesday column in my calendar is right about in the middle of the UI. But if I hit Option T or Alt T on Windows, I can actually left align today and I can see the next upcoming seven days, which is pretty useful. But I think this gets even more useful if we go into month view. So if I hit M to go to month, you can see we're also about in the middle of the month. So half of my UI here is taken up by days that are in the past and are no longer relevant to me. Once again, if I hit Option T, Alt T on Windows, I basically take today all the way to the top of the UI and now I can see basically six weeks out in advance, which is great for planning. By the way, in month view, you can also use the mouse scroll Wheel to scroll up and down. And then if you go to week view, you can hold shift and scroll to go sideways, back and forth, which is also pretty useful. Tip number five is all about documents that you might want to attach to recurring events. So over here on my Monday column in my calendar, I have an event called the GL meeting. This is what we call the green light meeting in my content team. It's where myself, my script writer, and my editor get together every single Monday and we brainstorm ideas, we green light videos that we're going to make, and we look over the performance of past videos. So like you might expect, we have a meeting notes database where we have a specific meeting note for every one of these meetings. And you can see here in the little document link area, I have the meeting for our GL meeting three on this past event. But this is actually a recurring event in Notion Calendar. And if I go over to next week, I can see the exact same thing, nine o'clock Monday uh, next week. But over here in the docs and links area, I don't have a link to that GL meeting three, and I actually wouldn't want it. Ideally, I would want the uh, link to the next week's meeting notes, and I would love if Notion gave us the ability to say, spawn a Notion template based on a recurring event and just automatically attach it. But in the meantime, a little workflow trick for you is instead of attaching that specific meeting note right there, I would recommend attaching the database itself. So here we have one of our GL meeting uh, notes here, and this lives inside of our meeting notes database. If I hit Command L to copy that URL to my clipboard, I can go back over to Notion Calendar, and inside of this recurring 
occurring event, I can actually uh, add that instead, which I'll just do by hitting meeting notes right there. I'll go ahead and send the update and I'm going to choose this and following events. So that way this meeting notes database is on every single GL meeting that we have in the future. Now, this isn't a perfect solution because it does actually add an additional click to the process. I have to click into the meeting notes database and then I have to find the specific meeting note that I want, but I do think it's a little bit of an improvement over having to make a new page every single week and then manually link that page to the specific recurrence of uh, the meeting that you are going into. So again, I think Notion could make this a little bit better with a feature update, especially tying into that recurring templates feature that they released a couple of years ago. But until then, I think linking a meeting notes database to your recurring meetings instead of the specific meeting documents is an upgrade. Speaking of meetings, tip number six here, last week I showed you that you could hit P and overlay a teammate calendar on top of your own, but there's also another feature that's really useful if you need to actually schedule a meeting with someone on your team. And that is if you hit F, you can actually do a meet with feature and I'll just select Tony right here. And this will overlay their calendar automatically on top of yours and also basically bring up that little scheduling interface. So it's gonna show you all the areas where either one of you has a currently booked event. So you won't be able to book your meeting during those times, but in any of these open areas, you can just draw like you could normally to create a scheduling link and you're gonna automatically create a meeting with that person. It's going to automatically generate a conferencing link and you can even send the invite just like that. Tip number seven, you can actually get rid of the weekend days on your calendar and you can zoom the hours in just to see your specific work hours. I had somebody specifically ask about this, so I wanted to show you exactly how you could do it. So right now we have a bit of a cluttered UI. First and foremost, if I hit the little back tick key, I can get rid of that left side menu. Can't do it with the right menu yet, but that alone is pretty helpful. And then if I don't wanna see these weekend days, I can hit command shift E to get rid of them. I believe it's control shift E on windows. And then if I do command shift and period, I can actually zoom my hours in. So if I just wanted to see uh, between the hours of say 11 and um, I think this is 5 PM right here, I could do that. If I wanted to, I could zoom out with command shift comma, and then I could zoom back out. And this is a way where I can basically zoom in or out to specifically see only a slice of my day. So here, this is basically nine to five. So this now gives me just a view of my work week. I'm not distracted by my weekends. I'm not distracted by what I'm doing in the evenings, I can plan just my work hours. Now I do have another feature request for the Notion calendar team here. Please give us this in the form of a single keyboard shortcut. I think a good way to do this is number one in the settings, allow people to set their work hours, maybe eight to five or nine to five, and then create a keyboard shortcut that will hide those weekend days and zoom directly to those work hours. I think that's gonna be a real boon, especially once, hopefully this happens, we get non-scheduled Notion pages from connected databases so we can drag them in and and basically time box our weeks. And speaking of dragging things, that's what tip number eight is all about. Because did you know that you can actually drag multiple events to new time slots, even if they're in a different week? So if you click and drag in Notion Calendar, you're basically going to be highlighting an area where you're gonna create a new event. And this would be like a three-day event right here. But if you hold shift and then you click and drag, you'll actually select multiple events. And then with them selected, you can easily drag them to a different day, such as me dragging them over to Thursday right here. Uh, but if you just keep on dragging, you'll actually Actually go into another week. So if I wanted to put these on Thursday next week, that is how I could do it. And that's super quick. Tip number nine is that you can actually set a different calendar to be your default calendar here in Notion Calendar. And this is something that might be obvious to some people, but I actually didn't know it until just recently and it's quite useful. So for a bit of context here, inside of Notion Calendar, you can see that I can actually bring in multiple Google accounts into Notion Calendar. So I've got about four different email addresses here with multiple calendars for each, which basically gets rid of the need to have a single Google account that subscribes to all of your other Google accounts and makes like this single unified calendar. Basically, Notion Calendar does that for you, but by default, you're still going to have a default calendar here. And in my case, it's the one associated with my personal calendar account, which would be fine, except for a lot of my events now have to do with uh, team meetings or basically are things that my team needs to be able to see. So if I just right click here on a different calendar within a different account, I can make that my default. And now if I make a brand new event just like that, let's just call this, I don't know, pogo sticking it's going to be on the CIG Thomas account by default. Of course, I can easily switch it over if I want to. I can still do that cool little blocking thing if I wanted to, but having a different default calendar, I think is pretty useful. 
For tip number 10, I wanna show you how to reclaim a little bit of the vertical space here in Notion Calendar. So before I showed you with back tick, you could basically close that menu, get some horizontal space. But we have a ton of all day events right here that is taking up a ton of vertical space near the top of my calendar. And I just can't see a whole lot of what's going on in the actual schedule. But if I hit Command K, and then I search for collapse, I can actually collapse the all day section down to a single line. And then if I want to, I can either click it or if I go ahead and collapse this one more time, you can also search for with Command K, expand all day section. Weirdly, there doesn't seem to be keyboard shortcuts for this just yet. I'm guessing that is something they could add pretty quickly, but until then, again, it's just Command K, search for collapse and there you go. And for tip number 11, because I'm going above and beyond in this video and bringing you a bonus tip, up here in this little week dropdown menu, if you go to number of days, notice that you can actually show more than seven days in the week view. And in fact, if we go to number of days and other, we can show up to 31 days in that week view, which because I'm so zoomed in with my UI here for these tutorials, it's not very useful. But if we went and set say uh, 14 days, so I'll just type 14 and find it right there, this could be pretty useful if you were say, booking a vacation or planning a team retreat or planning a business trip that spans more than seven days. Now month view is gonna show you all those days and will show you little blocks for the events, but for that kind of planning, you might actually wanna see these specific time slots for things like restaurant reservations or shows you're attending or meetings or anything like that. So I think this is a pretty useful feature even if it's pretty niche. And with that, you now have 11 more tips for getting the most out of Notion Calendar, which should hopefully combo with the tips from my first video to make you a true master of this tool. And like I promised in the intro, now a master of time and space itself. Now, speaking of comboing, Notion Calendar now combos really well with the core Notion app to create a basically perfect personal productivity system. You've got your calendar here, and then over in Notion, you can do note taking, you can do project management, you can do task management, and a whole lot more, especially if you have a good system that helps to do all of those things in one place. And that is exactly what you can get with my ultimate brain template. This is the product of me learning and tinkering and experimenting with Notion for basically five years at this point and building what really works best for me as a personal productivity system that brings tasks, projects, notes, goal tracking, and a whole lot more into a single system. And if you would like to try this system out for yourself, you can get it over at thomasjfrank.com slash brain. And you can even use Let's Go 2024 as a coupon code at checkout to get 50 bucks off of the template. And in addition to the template itself, you also get access to our customer community where we have a great beginner's course all about how to use this template, get the most out of it, and also maximize your personal productivity. And if you get stuck, we also have Notion certified experts in our support spaces that make sure every single question gets answered. So if you want the best productivity system for Notion and a great companion to Notion Calendar, get Ultimate Brain over at thomasjfrank.com slash brain. And don't forget to use that code Let's Go 2024 to get 50 bucks at checkout. If you didn't see my original Notion Calendar video, you can watch it right there. There's also one more video right there that you might find interesting. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.